Hey guys, welcome back to the Hat House. In today's video, I'm going to answer one of the most asked questions that I get is how do I get so many hats? How do I source my hats? And I'm going to answer that today and I'm setting up a little challenge. I, I used my method last week and I got some hats in. Um, this method is basically just getting them from eBay. Uh, I use a couple of tools to help me uh, source these hats which I'll, I'll show you also in the video. But uh, I got these hats in. Uh, I've got them listed mostly already on eBay. And uh, we're going to see if I make any money off these lots. And I'm going to show you how I got them in. So. two main tools that I use besides the eBay app. Of course, I use it to actually make the purchase. Uh, the first tool is a search app that is called C Spot Grid. Uh, there's plenty of those out there um, that you can put in a search term and it'll return those searches to you and let you know when something's uh, been found or something's newly listed or the auction's about to end. Uh, and I'll kind of show you that right now. The app is pretty straightforward to use. Uh, we're going to go in here and we're just going to type in our search term that we're looking for. And I put in vintage hat lots. And then I'm going to click search. All right, you can see that it brings up several lots that we can look at. Uh, we can go down and we can scroll through the lots and then find one that we want to take a look at. This happened to be a vintage farm seed. This one is on auction. So it would be a great time to use our auction sniper, which I'm going to kind of talk you through on the, the next one. But here I just search this every hour to two hours. I'll just pull up the app on my phone, see if there's anything new that's really dropped in. Uh, and this, this is the part where you can set it to 10 minutes, 30 minutes. Um, like I said, 10 minutes requires a subscription. I'm not even sure exactly how much it is, but um, 30 minutes is sufficient for me. You can save this search and then it's on your main page. You can see the other searches that I have there. Okay, the second app that I use is really an auction sniper app. If I happen to find something that is on auction and it ends six days from now, and I know that I might not be around to place a bid on it, and I don't really want to give away how much I'm willing to bid on it right now. Um, and it is totally legal. I'll go ahead and post the uh, eBay policy about auction snipers up here right now. Uh, so you can kind of see that the auction sniper is is allowed by eBay. They just say, of course, it doesn't guarantee that you're going to win. Somebody else may have an auction sniper or have a higher bid in. Uh, but I just like to use it because I don't want the bids to run up too, too early before the auction ends. Uh, and it gives it a chance to go a little higher than it might go. And I don't want people to know that there are that many people that are, might be interested in that item. So if everybody just puts their bid in on a, in an auction sniper, it, it still runs up the bid and they'll get the money of whatever people decide to bid on it. But uh, I just like to use it uh, to put my bid in at the last minute. And I forget that auctions are going on a lot of times. So uh, it's a good reminder that I had something that I was bidding on. Uh, this one that I use, there's plenty of these out here, just like the other app. You can use whatever type of auction sniper that you want. But uh, I just kind of put in a bid that I'm comfortable paying for the hats. Um, and really, I work it down to per piece. How much are you willing to spend per piece on each hat? Uh, whether it be, are they $1 hats? Are they $2 hats? Are they $5 hats? Are they $10 hats? And just kind of figure out how much you're willing to spend for each hat. Uh, and then you can kind of work out how many hats are in the lot, their condition, and you can kind of put in your bid and uh, see if you got them. So now what we're going to do is we're going to look at two. I didn't get either one of these on auction. I did them best offer. Uh, we'll look at these two lots that I got and we'll kind of go through them. Another great thing is we're going to we're going to track each one of these lots and we're going to we're going to put them all on a spreadsheet. We're going to see, did I actually make any money off these? Uh, how much did I make? How long did it take me to get my money back? So kind of going to kind of make a series out of this 
and uh, see what our return is on these hats that I bought. Also helping you kind of understand how I got them to begin with. So uh, it'll be really interesting to see how much we make and also be able to share with you uh, a good strategy on uh, how to get some hats yourself uh, if you were looking at flipping something on eBay. All right, guys, welcome back to the Hat House. Uh, I've wanted to do this video since we got our very first question on how to source hats. So what I did was I went on to eBay. Uh, I, I'll show the whole process in, in a different video, step by step what I did in case you want to know that. But right now I just went in and I bought a couple of hat lots. I paid $200 for both these boxes is about 150 for this one that's including the shipping and everything and about $50 for this one um, and what we're going to do is I'm going to show you how we bought the lot and then Mary is going to track each one of these hats for us as we sell them and be able to give you an update on them and she's going to kind of go through how she's going to keep track of them uh, when I take the pictures tomorrow I'm going to mark each one of them with a colored sticker it's a different sticker than what we normally use. That way when we pick them, we know that it was from this eBay lot that we had. Um, and then I'm gonna write it down and put down what it sold for, how much we paid for it, and how much we made off of it. Yeah, we really wanna know kinda of how long is it gonna take us to break even on this lot. Um, I'm hoping it doesn't take more than 30 days to get at least $200 back from everything that we bought. Uh, and then be able to start getting into some profits after that. So uh, we'll go ahead and make this kind of an unboxing video too. Uh, let's look at what we bought uh, and then uh, we'll see what you guys think if, uh, if we will even make our money back at all. Uh, so let's dig in. All right, box number one. This is the one we bought for $50. And I'm hoping the hats are in good condition so we don't have to do a lot of cleaning on them too. But in this one we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. That's how many it said it was going to be. Um, first up was just a trucker hat that said Our Town Phoenix on it. Probably a ten dollar hat. Uh, next one, I really like this one. It says "Friends Don't Let Friends Drive a Ford Vintage Hat." This one was really cool. Then we had a nice GE patch scrambled eggs. Foam was really good in it. It was really clean. Then we had this nice Hawaiian colored hat. Usually these do pretty good, even no matter what they say on them. The Hawaiian color hats do really well. And this one was super clean. Next up was a Lipton quality hat, vintage trucker hat. Next up was a Florida State Seminoles top of the world clean vintage sports hat. Then we had a grease hat, vintage grease hat. Then we had a GTO. This one should do pretty good too. Car hat. This one was really cool too. Uh, vintage Budweiser, Cerveza. All these are really clean too. Really good condition. Almost better than the pictures they showed. Uh, this one was a vintage. That's, is that Looney Tunes? Who is that? Mary? I know it. I can't think of Aristocrats or something like that. Aristocrats? No. Animaniacs. Animaniacs. Yeah. <laughs> I had to look inside the hat. Um, and then we had a Zigzag Airways, really cool. This one I was afraid it does have some foam problems, but really cool Kenwood speakers. We'll just have to clean that one out. Uh, next was a patch hat, um, Def Tech Corporation, still really clean. And then. I don't know what this one is exactly. It says obstacle on it, vintage hat. Then we had Wheel of Fortune. Vintage Wheel of Fortune hat. And then the last one in that box was a sports specialties. Plain logo, Arizona Diamondbacks. 
really super clean. So all those for $50 in that box. How do you think we did? You think I'll give them money back fast? I, I think so. Two or three hats, I think we'll have our money back, but we'll see. Uh, we'll go to the next box. Okay, it took me a minute to get a, the top off, but uh, looks like you packaged them really well, so I can't really complain about that. I think we might like the results. There was a lot of vintage trucker hats in here. I did ask him before I bought them if the foam was good in all of them. He said it was, so we'll see. All right, I got the plastic off. Um, I'm going to go through these real quick. They look pretty good condition. Uh, there's Gerald McGinney drilling, perfectly clean, nice trucker hat. Uh, another Gerald McGinney drilling, foam's good in it. Nice denim trucker, farm plan, Royal Bank. Well, there's one down. Needs a foam cleaned out a bit. Uh, here's a McMillan construction. Gonna need the foam cleaned out of it. Mountain View Credit Union. Gonna need the foam cleaned out of it. So he wasn't exactly honest, but uh, I'm okay with it. If you haven't seen my video of how to clean out a uh, vintage hat, make sure you check that out. Uh, this the foam's good in this one. A three stripe. Rental service, big patch on it. Lee Mason tools, going to need cleaned out. Uh, next up was this really cool vintage colors. Nice 80s, 90 colorway here. Straight. Then we had a modern livestock auction. Going to need the phone cleaned out. Then we had... My heart is in farming, but my ass is in debt. Nice, funny trucker hat. Here's a corduroy construction trucker hat. Here's a nice, clean... Oh, that's a corner. Gee. 50th anniversary. Here we had a Mountain View Sports. Here's a good one. Ski do foam's good in this one. Moran equipment, regular trucker. Here's a patch trucker, Power Plus. Good foam in it. Uh, here's a three stripe trucker, Larry's Bobcats. Really cool hat. Hmm, something Alberta. Nice trucker hat. Brand new Bobcat equipment. Foam's good in it. So I think we're up to around four that has bad foam. These are all really clean now. Car Canada Rentals and Leasing. AE Richter. Foam's good in it. Country Glass. Trucker Hat. Here's a Palm Trucker Hat, Always Truck Rentals, it's clean too. Ferguson Supply, Trucker Hat, foam's still good in it. Alright, I think we're doing alright. Here's another Palm Trucker, these are really cool. These kind of go in and out of style. Sometimes these sell well for 30 or 40 bucks, sometimes you give them away for 10. Another Mountain View Sports Trucker. This is a Tomahawk. Nice circle patch. Really cool. Another three stripe Canadian Trail Riding Championship. A Triple L Enterprises patch trucker. Alright, this one still has the plastic on it. Uh, it's still in really good shape too. Then we got a Bush Bunny hauling and towing. Big patch, a Hawaii with scrambled egg or leaves on this one. This one's got scrambled eggs on it. 
Cotton Kohoot Ranches. These are all really clean. Just just the foam clean out on a few. This one's really cool. Marin Equipment. Those will probably go for the least. I think there's like two or three of them in there. Like the Dil Didsbury Meat Processor. Quality Conklin Products. Foam's good there. The Great Canadian Blowout. McNeely Auctions. And this is why I bought most of them. They all had really good patches on them. Most of them had really good patches on them. And these are the kind of trucker hats you want to be looking for. Oops. These are the kind of trucker hats you're not really looking for that are printed on. They don't usually sell for as much. But you want like these two. Nice big patches on them. Usually do a lot better. Foam's good in both of these two. Calgary Pony, Chuck Wagon, Dane's Western Shops, Canada Rental and Leasing, Pizza Steakhouse, Lazy, Lazy Sea maybe. Then we got a Bears Truck Stops. And the last one was really good that I saw when I bought it. Hooker headers. This one should do really well too. It's a nice vintage hat. But most of the foam has gone out of it. Alright guys, so that's all the hats. So we had 64 total hats. Uh, let me break out the handy dandy calculator. So that's 200 divided by 64. That's about $3 a hat. Uh, $3 a hat I think is pretty good. It's a good place to uh, to be when you're buying ball cats. Uh, even if you sell one for $10, you're still going to make money on it. Um, even if you have to go to five, you'll break even on that one hat. But uh, I think it's a good cost of goods right there for, uh, for these hats. And we should come out fairly quickly on uh, making some money on these hats. Okay, so that's all the hats that we got. Uh, what do you guys think? I do want to point out a couple of things. Uh, we did get everything listed pretty much besides a few that I needed to clean out. Um, and something came up while we were listing it, and you may run into it. And I want to give you one more tip. And if you've made it this far, please hit the subscribe button so you can keep track of if we made or lost money. Uh, and then also just for the good tips that come along with it. So what we ran into was there was a couple of hats that didn't meet the quality standards, even though the pet, the foam looked great in these hats, the bills on them were cracking really easy. And that's what you'll run into sometimes with these vintage hats. Uh, the previous owner may not even know it, but what I did is I went ahead and you can still get your money back. Uh, what I did is I went ahead and went and got the patches off of them, off that one and that one. And then I'll, once I get enough patches, I usually just lot up the patches and I'll sell all the patches together to get some money back the other thing is uh one of the hats was uh a youngin these two were yupung snaps on here uh we can cut these snaps off i just usually cut them like right here and just leave a little bit of the fabric on both sides and then uh, throw these into a jar or a box and then you can just lot up all your snaps people are always looking for vintage snaps uh in different colors having bunch of different colors helps too a red blue white um people are always looking for snaps to replace on their vintage hats and if the snaps, just test the snaps make sure they don't snap um and you can lot those up and you can put those together and uh, sell those a snap can go for about ten dollars uh and then the patches uh if you lot all those up uh ten twenty dollars for a lot of uh five to 10 patches. Um, and you can get your money back that way. Uh, even if the hat doesn't exactly work out like those did, uh, I think there's one more out there, but I hadn't cleaned the foam out of it yet. So there was three hats down, uh, that I'm not going to be able to list. I might've could have sold them, but 
it was just a return waiting to happen. There might have been somebody out there that would have taken the hat either way, but I think uh, salvaging the hat at that point was the best move. Really appreciate you guys hanging out. I'm going to keep you updated on how the sales go, how, how much money we make, how quickly we make it back, and uh, we'll see you guys again soon.